This video is sponsored by Everwinter, a new wargaming convention in Boston, Massachusetts being held in December. More about Everwinter later on in the video. What's up folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi and today I wanted to talk to you about using two dimensional accessories in your games of Warhammer 40k. Some of the misconceptions about the concept and uh, some ways that I think that you should be using them to improve your games of Warhammer. The use of 2D accessories in terrain is becoming more and more popular among 40k players and events, but their use is still pretty controversial. So I think now is a good time to cover them and discuss some of the reasons that you may not want to use these style of accessories and the ways that you can circumvent their downsides. Now to clarify, there's two major types of accessories that I'm gonna be talking about today. Objective markers and terrain. For good examples of both, you can go look at 3D6 Wargaming, who make laser cut neoprene products for use with both Warhammer 40K and Age of Sigmar. If you've been around the Warhammer gaming sphere for any period of time, you've probably seen 3D6's products. They make branded objective markers for tons of gaming groups, content creators, and events all over the community, myself included. You can actually get tactical tortoise objective markers in the link down in the video description and show off how cool shelled rep Reptiles look when carrying giant guns on their back while you're playing your games of 40k. The folks over at 3D6 Wargaming have also worked very closely with today's video sponsor, that being Everwinter, a multidisciplinary wargaming convention being held in December 10th through 11th in Boston, Massachusetts. This is the first year the convention is going to be running and they're looking to make a pretty big splash with lots of sweet vendors and tons of competitive events, both for Warhammer 40K and Age of Sigmar, but also a bunch of other miniature games, including things like Infinity, Malifaux, Star Wars Legion, and many more. In fact, I'm gonna be there all weekend streaming the Warhammer 40K event, and uh, my game, Breachstorm, I'm wearing a shirt for it, is also gonna be there giving off demos and uh, having a booth, so come hang out with me. You can check them out at wickeddicey.com slash everwinter. And again, they're running December 10th through 11th in Boston, Massachusetts. And while you're at all these miniature gaming tournaments, you could bring some cool neoprene objective markers to make your games easier. In 9th edition 40K, an objective marker is by definition a 40 millimeter circle that's placed on the table. Control for which is measured three inches horizontally and five inches vertically from the edges of that marker. This is a difference from older editions where objectives were a, just a six inch circle and makes the total diameter of the circle six inches plus 45 millimeters or just a hair over 7.5 inches. For this reason, placing a template down on the table that shows you the area that you have to stand in for your models to be considered to control or contest the objective is way easier than constantly measuring that three inch distance from the edge of the token. Personally, I recommend that everyone uses a marker like these just to speed up and clean up their games since they eliminate tons of discussions and gray area about whether or not a model is contesting on our objective marker or can move to get in range to steal one. They also give you some other benefits as well. They let you theme your objectives to the battlefield. Since fun artwork can be included on the template that represents strategic positions and sacred sites or other important locations on the table. So they can be themed to the gaming table that you're playing on and can be moved around depending on the mission. Now, the weirdness arises when these objective templates interact with terrain especially since the release of the US Open Terrain format, where Games Workshop indicated that the terrain placement restriction, where it cannot overlap the 40 millimeter objective marker, it has been essentially rescinded. So more and more events are placing terrain directly over the middle of that objective template. This can make use of the template very difficult since it's often covered by the base of a terrain feature. And I've heard some players in the community tout this as a reason not to play with these templates, but I'm not sure that's entirely justified. A common refrain I'm gonna fall back on this video is a synergy between the high-tech 2D elements that we're talking about here and old school solutions that you may be more familiar with. Players have used things like a poker chip to represent the 40 millimeter objective markers since the days of yore. And I think there's a happy medium here that 
uses the strengths of both systems. Like I said before, I always recommend you use a 2D template that measures the entire area of the objective marker, not just the marker itself, but in cases where you can't because it intersects with terrain, using a classic objective marker to sub in for the template or just to mark its center if you're placing it underneath a terrain feature. In the few instances where the template doesn't work perfectly, gives you the best of both worlds. In my experience, this only really impacts one to two objectives in each game, often the two that are in each player's deployment zone, because you will often have terrain placed in your deployment zone to keep your army safe on the first turn, and that will oftentimes intersect with a template. So just having a couple objective markers with you for these particular situations means that you can still use the objective template elsewhere on the table where it's gonna be cleaner to measure, but if you need to, you can just place that 40 millimeter marker down as normal. Now that's the easy solution. So let's talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to these flat templates. That being 2D terrain. Now, whether we like it or not, 40K is moving rapidly towards a 2D terrain friendly format. With area terrain mechanics and rules like obscuring that allow terrain features to impact the game regardless of their verticality, it's only a matter of time before the game can be played with terrain templates alone. And I know there are gonna be a lot of people watching this video who do not want that to happen and are about to tune out, but bear with me because I probably agree with you. Now, first off, for those who aren't aware, Let's explain exactly what I'm talking about here. In a nutshell, 2D terrain sets just use a template to mark out the borders of terrain on the tabletop. You can see examples of this in things like the US Open format, where giant templates are used to demarcate the areas of ruins and forests. With 3D elements put on top, usually as kind of an afterthought. Although US Open specifically uses these weird acrylic bricks, which I understand because they let you do interesting things like place objective markers and view the table mat through them, but they just look so shiny. <laughs> you can also see this in classic terrain kits like Battlefield in a Box, which include a kidney-shaped base for a forest, and then also includes the 3D elements of the forest on top. 40K in the past has used mechanics like these to represent area terrain for a long time, where only the boundary of that base actually matters, the 3D elements not so much, and they're often removed. In 9th edition 40K, you actually technically should not be moving around the 3D elements of that terrain because it still impacts your model placement, but we have some solutions there I'd like to talk about. But I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with that kind of terrain, especially those Battlefield in a Box sets from their local game store, where you have a base, you have a 3D element, the two are separate, and the base represents the mechanics for when you're moving your models and determining whether or not they're in cover. And that is 2D terrain in a nutshell. It's effectively just that base, but oftentimes without the three-dimensional component. Now, I'm also sure a lot of people watching are familiar with 2D terrain from its time with War Machine and Hordes, which is a system almost entirely compatible with 2D terrain features. In fact, almost all competitive play for that game uses neoprene terrain templates in place of any 3D objects. This style of terrain has its benefits and drawbacks. On one hand, it's light years more convenient for both players and events. Since storage and transport is much easier with just a set of templates that can be compacted down into a few square inches versus an entire table full of ruins or buildings. It also helps standardize terrain since similar templates become popular across the community worldwide, rather than the fragmented nightmare hellscape that 40k uses currently, with each region having its own distinct terrain format, all of which have different benefits and drawbacks, and can wildly affect the balance of particular armies from format to format. And with 2D terrain, you rarely, if ever, get complaints about the style of this terrain from a form or functionality standpoint. What I mean by that is a good set of 2D terrain is much better and created more cheaply and more easily than a bad set of 3D terrain. And 40K events, especially in 8th edition, less so now, but it still happens, have been historically absolutely rife with the latter. Many large and sometimes prestigious events in the past have been widely panned for having too many, too few, or 
just straight up too ugly terrain features. And a lot of that could have been avoided by just including a cheap set of 2D terrain. But in my opinion, War Machine in Hordes is a good example of a bad way of implementing 2D terrain. And that's because it foregoes the three dimensional element that makes miniature games so great. A future I'd like to see is a marriage between the two systems. And I think this is the platonic ideal for a complex game like 40K. I like to use 2D bases or areas for terrain features that gives you nicely themed art, consistent size and shape between tables or events, and a good material that unlike a big, highly textured base like MDF or something like a thick acrylic, doesn't constantly knock your models over or interact poorly with overlapping elements like objective markers that we were just talking about previously. Then on top of that should be placed the 3D elements like buildings, trees, and other structures that give the gameplay and look of the game its all important verticality. I'd love to see a future where spots are demarcated on those bases for the 3D elements to go. So you can remove them and replace them consistently every time. Whether or not that's printed on the template itself or just marked out some other way, you could just use a Sharpie or tape. I think either one of those works. The biggest advantage of these 2D systems is cleanliness of gameplay, where tall structures and intervening elements don't hinder your measurement. I'm sure everyone has had the experience of playing at their LGS and getting into a heated, we'll call it a discussion with their opponent about a particular very important measurement around a big vertical wall that because the walls glued to a huge base, can't be removed without disrupting the whole game state anyway to measure that important measurement easily. But using a system like this with separate walls and a 2D base for them, these discussions can be circumvented entirely. And that's the real benefit of this hybrid system. In my opinion, this is how 2D terrain should be incorporated into your games of 40K, with a 2D base for a 3D element to sit consistently on top of. 2D accessories as a whole are becoming much more popular with the community, but in my opinion, there are right and wrong ways to use them, and especially that's the case with terrain. I think it's important to keep an open mind and remember that the use of these tools doesn't erase the ones that we've all used in the past. And in fact, meshing the two together makes the game much easier and much cleaner to play, while still keeping that all important aesthetic and theme for players in any part of the community. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about these 2D elements. I think it's an important discussion for the community to have as they become more and more popular. And remember, don't forget to check out those accessories from 3D6 Wargaming. They have objective markers and they have terrain templates from the US Open format, all of which are available in a variety of different themes. You can visit their booth over at Everwinter in Boston, Massachusetts, December 10th through 11th. Visit wickeddicey.com slash everwinter for more details. And big thanks to Everwinter for supporting the channel. And with that, I'll wrap things up. Big thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everyone who supports the channel over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. Also, YouTube channel members, Twitch subscribers, all you people are great. Let me keep it classy, folks. And have happy wargaming.